Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! It happened a few months ago. I work in a medical examination clinic and anyone working in the field knows that patients arrive late, it's normal. That's why we do several daily exceptions and inclusions. But always to patients who like to cause confusion for anything, even if they don't have any problems. The day was very calm, with only a few patients missing to close a schedule. Another patient arrives, gets a password and is directed to my desk. Me? Good afternoon, sir. What exams did you come for today? I have this exam scheduled to take. Don't take too long because I don't have it all day. I look at the schedule and see that the patient is two hours late. Um, just a second, sir. I have to check if the doctor accepts to include the exam in the schedule. The doctor did not accept to make the inclusion because the schedule is at maximum capacity. As soon as I deliver the message from the doctor to the patient, I see a fist coming towards my face. The minute I started getting back to my senses after the punch, I could only see the patient being escorted out by the guard. Later, my supervisor told me that they called the police and will be pressing charges against this guy. I also can't wait to change jobs. Imagine being in high school. Back in the latter days of George Bush and finally buying that iPod of your dreams after saving up your allowance and the money you made around the neighborhood doing random work and lifeguarding at the local pool. Yep, that was me. And I was that douchebag 14-year-old who would make sure you knew I had one of the better iPods. One that could play video. It was the latest nano if I remember right. Simpler times. But every story needs an antagonist. My sister happened to find that role many times. We are very close now, but back then it was not so rosy. She was a teenager as well and spent most of those years resenting me. If I had something nice, screw you for having that. I was quite protective of my precious iPod. She raised quite the crap storm when my parents refused to buy her one. Your brother saved his money. We didn't pay for it. We are not stopping you from buying one too. If you save your money. That was their attitude towards any luxury that us kids wanted. Even up to that time when buying a first car was on the table. We each had to buy our own. It built character and taught responsibility. Well, that iPod goat missing one day at home when I knew damn well that I had left it charging at the family computer. I left it unattended. My parents confirmed they did not touch it and all the eyes were on my sister. I'll jump ahead here. As it turned out, she had indeed taken it and had one of her friends temporarily store it until the hate was off of her. She knew my parents would essentially strip search her. After this unraveled, one of my buddies saw her with the iPod at school several days later. It was time for payback. Back then, I liked to think of myself as a bona fide hacker. That's right. I knew all about patch files and how to open command prompt. Don't cross me. You have no idea what I'm capable of. Yeah, anyway, we don't talk about those dark days anymore. But I actually did know enough to copy and paste some destructive commands into scripts, using delete and registry delete commands and the like. In the days of Windows XP, this would essentially require reinstalling the operating system. I also was aware of a program called Pat2exe, which could package your patch files and associated files that would call from the same directory into a normal exe file. And you could pick an icon to slap on that exe if you had the ICO file on hand. It doesn't take a genius because as much as I thought I was one, I wasn't to devise a plan here. I put a script together with the worst crap I could muster and gave it the Internet Explorer icon. This went on to my sister's computer, which was an old Pentium M laptop, which barely had enough power to load my space at the time. 
My hacker abilities allowed me to log into the administrator account by putting into safe mode or something and simply replacing the iExplorer.exe main file with my science experiment. I believe I had it to where it actually opened the real Internet Explorer in barrel. So, I could deny this more easily. Fast forward to that magical moment. She's home from color guard practice and is ready for an evening full of crappy webcam photos that use every mid-2000s effect ever created. But before she can upload them, disaster. The screen resolution goes down and the color profile is 16 colors for some reason. Random pop-up messages every few seconds. Microsoft Windows has detected the giant C word. Please consider a system upgrade and stuff like that. Your hard drive is jammed with peanut butter. Restart required. The whole script plays out and she's left with a paperweight until someone can get around to sorting it. Unfortunately, the computer guy in the family took quite a while to get around to it. My dad knew damn well that I had something to do with this, even if he didn't understand it fully. He made my sister apologize to me before I helped her with her laptop and made her buy me a new case for it. After she threw away the one I had to try and make it less identifiable. Well, that's the story folks. I have a video from 8 plus years ago of this script running in a virtual machine if anyone wants to see it. Edit. To people asking what happened to the iBonds, I got it back after learning from my buddy that she was going to have it on her. She was in a world of crap from my very traditional discipline that child parents, in addition to her laptop being a boat anchor for a few weeks. As a nurse on duty in the emergency room that night, I have been working long hours to help care for my patients. It can be a challenging job at times and I had already dealt with more than my fair share of difficult cases that evening. Just before Karen stormed into the emergency room with her son, we had received a patient in critical condition who was in dire need of medical attention. The doctors and nurses were working quickly to stabilize the patient and get them the care they needed. So when Karen stormed in with her son demanding that he be seen immediately for a minor scratch on his arm, I was caught off guard. I tried to explain to Karen that there were people with more serious injuries waiting to be seen and that we had a protocol in place for triaging patients. But she didn't care. She was determined to get her son seen before anyone else, even if it meant disrupting the care of other patients. Ma'am, there are people with more serious injuries waiting to be seen. I explained to Karen, if you could just take a seat and wait your turn, I'm sure we will be able to help your son as soon as possible. But Karen was having none of it. I am not going to sit here and wait while my son is in pain. She yelled. I demand that he be seen right now. I tried to remain calm and professional, but Karen was becoming more and more agitated. Ma'am, I understand that you're concerned about your son. I said. But there are other patients here who also need medical attention. We have a protocol in place for triaging patients, and your son will have to wait his turn like everyone else. This is outrageous, Karen shouted. Do you know who I am? I demand to speak to your manager right now. I could see that Karen was starting to attract the attention of the other hospital staff, and I knew I needed to defuse the situation before it got out of hand. So, I took a deep breath and tried to reason with her one more time. Ma'am, I understand that you're upset, I said, but please try to understand that we're doing the best we can to help all of our patients. If you could just be patient and wait your turn, I'm sure we will be able to help your son as soon as possible. But Karen was not interested in hearing what I had to say. She just continued to argue and berate me, getting more and more agitated by the minute. Finally, in a fit of rage, Karen reached out and grabbed a handful of my hair pulling it hard as she tried to physically force me to comply with her demands. And that's when things took a turn that Karen never could have expected. You see, I happened to be a regular at a self-defense class, and I reacted quickly and instinctively when Karen grabbed me. 
I used a series of moves that I had learned in class to get myself out of her hold and bring her down to her knees and completely disarm her. Karen lit out a loud shriek as she was brought down, and I could see the other hospital staff and patients watching in shock, but I remained focused and professional, continuing to hold Karen in place until the hospital security guard arrived. The guards quickly took control of the situation and Karen was escorted out of the building. She continued to shriek and protest as she was taken away, but it was clear that she was no match for the trained security team. After the incident was over, I learned that the hospital had called the police to report the altercation. When the police arrived and interviewed witnesses and reviewed the CCTV footage, it was clear that Karen had been the aggressor. She was arrested and charged with assault. She was released on bail though, but she was required to appear in court to face the charges against her. I decided to press charges against Karen as well, and I was prepared to testify in court about what had happened. I knew it would be a difficult and emotional experience, but I felt that it was important to hold Karen accountable for her actions. When the day of the trial arrived, Karen appeared in court with her lawyer by her side. She tried to plead her case, but the evidence against her was clear. The CCTV footage from the hospital showed her attacking me and there were multiple eyewitnesses who testified about what had happened. In the end, Karen was found guilty. The judge sentenced her to six months in jail and ordered her to pay a fine. She was also required to attend anger management classes and perform community service. I think it was a fair penalty and I felt that it was justified given the severity of Karen's action. She had shown a complete lack of respect for me and the other hospital staff, and she had endangered the safety and well-being of the other patients as well. I was glad that the legal system had held Karen accountable for her actions, and I hoped that the experience would serve as a lesson to her and others like her. Despite the challenges and difficulties that I faced that night, I remained committed to my profession and helping others. I knew that there would be other difficult cases and difficult people that I would have to deal with in the future, but I was determined to remain calm and professional no matter what. So, I like to bring my own food into the office and we have a fridge to put things into. And I have my food in tubs with my name on it. A co-worker would sometimes not see people's names on food and think it was theirs, so would heat it up and eat it then then apologize. They did this enough for it to be an annoyance, but not enough for our employers to really care. This had been happening with my food for once or twice a month. Last month I had enough and I like spicy food, but don't bring it into the office as sometimes I will let people try some of my food in my cooking. I ordered a bag of ghost chili peppers and put the full bag into a big pot of chili that would last for several days. I took this into the office and had it for lunch every day. Midweek my lunch went missing and I was waiting for the person who was stealing my lunch to get a shock when they ate it. What happened in reality was someone got sent home sick. And the next day they were off and I was told they went to the doctors for stomach pains. Two weeks went by and the co-worker who was off refused to talk about it and said HR was involved, so I knew they were going to try to get me fired. I went home and ordered another bag of ghost chilies and made another patch of my chili. This time was only one chili in a single top. I put this in the freezer and the following Monday I was told I had an HR meeting that day. I refused and said they need to give me 24 hours to find someone to come into the meeting with me and the next day I had my manager come into the meeting and brought in my now heated ghost chili infused chili. The long and short is I was told I could be fired for trying to poison the person who was stealing my lunch and I asked if they admitted to stealing people's lunch, which they did. I then said I have a patch of that chili in question with me and I like spicy food. Me liking spicy food shouldn't stop me from having it at work since it doesn't smell when heated, like fish. And my manager agreed it was on the person who took my lunch without knowing how spicy it was. 
and I should not be held liable if they eat something of someone else's that doesn't agree with them. My manager and I then ate some of the chili and offered it to the other people in the meeting, some of whom tried it and agreed while it was spicy, it was clearly what I liked, as I was fine eating it. The meeting ended and nothing happened. I wasn't taken into another meeting and my lunch wasn't taken anymore. But the person who had stolen our lunch got a slap on the wrist but was allowed to stay at work. Lunches started to go missing again so my manager went to HR to say that lunches were going missing and he knew who was taking it and had proof this time. And when they asked for the proof, he presented the meeting record with a line highlighted where they admitted they had stolen lunch and the line where HR had said this was not what the meeting was about. They were fired the next day for theft of property and told they would not be given a reference. I come to you with another story from PKL Thompson's. This happened probably about 5 years ago or so, so my memory is fuzzy on exactly what was said. So whatever quotes are in here are not verbatim. I'ma do my best. So I worked at a craft store that I like to call PKL Johnson's. Not real name obviously for Reddit purposes. If you're from the US or Canada, you probably know the one I'm talking about. I work in the back of the custom framing counter and due to it being very expensive, it's very common for customers to try to get discounts and deals. This is a similar story to my last one. As in, it also involves a scammer trying to get free stuff from the custom framing department. One day, I was working the counter and an older gentleman with his wife came in with three canvas paintings that they wanted framed. For those of you who don't have experience with art, Canvas paintings are wrapped and pulled tight around the square wooden bar that we call a stretcher bar for display and painting on. These paintings were so old and in return, the stretcher bars were also old and falling apart. They wanted three custom frames which I happily designed for them and that was that. About two weeks later, our standard turnaround time, their art was ready for pickup. When they came to pick them up, they had a problem. According to them, the canvases were wrinkled. They were like that when they dropped them off. Usually, we're supposed to note these things down, but this was at the end of a period where things were total chaos. So, it slipped through the cracks. We had just gone through 9 months with only 2 framers working, which is not enough people to keep up with the workload we had. Things got so bad that we had over 200 overdue orders. We had so many people calling and screaming about their orders being laid that it actually made us more behind just because of having to spend so much time talking to these people. We would hire someone and they would quit that week just because of how much pressure was on us. However, we finally found a new framing manager who had what it took to handle this nonsense. For this story, we're gonna call her Starlight. Starlight takes no one's nonsense. She's a good old southern girl who can lightly shoot a passive-aggressive sweetie at you that will shatter every bone in your body. I once saw her get into it with a customer and at one point the customer yelled, if she calls me sweetie one more time, I will punch her in the face. Good times. Starlight came in about 6 weeks after this whole nonsense show started. We've been going back and forth with these customers trying to please them, but they weren't having it. They were claiming that we screwed up their canvases and made them wrinkled, which was a lie. They are the type of people who think they can bulk grab their way into free stuff. They wanted all three of their frames for free and they wanted us to restretch the canvases on brand new stretcher bars for free as well. We were losing the battle. They damn near got what they wanted. This is until Starlight showed up. They only met Starlight once. I showed up to work and as I walked in I saw them hurry past like dogs with their tail between their legs. I hurried to the pack and asked what the hell happened. Starlight said, I handled it. I never got the details but she laid down the law. I was smiling ear to ear. What an epic day. The guy slinked in later after she left and tried some crap like, Hey, I haven't gotten those free frames. And I said, sure, let me just call Starlight for you. And he turned white. He quickly stammered, 
No, 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 that's all right. Have a good day. And that was the last of it. Never saw that jerk again. I was beaming. All it takes is someone who has the courage to not back down. They were banned and they never got their money back. Hats off to you, Starlight. You're a legend. I hope you know it. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.